Uh, so the title of the talk is about planning. Uh, but uh, I want to talk about something uh, maybe a bit more general. Uh, I'll call it uh, algorithmic prior. Uh, and uh, I want to argue that uh, planning may be a good place uh, to do these sort of things. Right. So uh, the starting point is uh, this fact that any polynomial time algorithm can be represented as a polynomial size neural network. Right. That, that's simply because our computational elements like our gates can simulate N gates, can simulate all gates, can simulate not gates. Therefore, uh, right, it can simulate the traditional circuits. So uh, given this fact, then uh, an interesting question, right? since we know a lot of, about algorithms, an interesting question is can we exploit our knowledge of algorithms to construct more interesting blocks that we can add to the currently successful blocks such as convolutional layers, long short term memory, uh, residual networks, and so on. Right? So we have a lot of uh, algorithms that are very successful. Uh, dynamic programming, uh, convex optimization, linear programming. Can we uh, exploit our knowledge of algorithms and embed them as circuits uh, in this form uh, by this idea? Uh, and then uh, hopefully improve uh, the performance uh, on various tasks, and in particular on planning tasks. Uh, the reason I got interested in this was uh, this paper in NIPS 2016, uh, Value Iteration Network. So what they did was they converted Markov decision process into uh, a recurrent neural network and then trained that by uh, gradient descent. Right? So uh, if you are not familiar with Markov decision process, uh, think of it as shortest path on the graph. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do most of my explanation as shortest path in a graph because that's easier to explain as well. Right, so think about uh, bellman ford algorithm for shortest path in a graph. Right, uh, so at, uh, so uh, what you maintain is this VT, which uh, sort of measures the distance to the goal right, uh, that you can get to the best that you can do within t, t steps, if you do t steps. Uh, so to do this, right, to update to the best that you can get for t plus 1 steps, uh, all you do is you add on, right, you look at this uh, q function, which is right, which nodes can you go to. Uh, so that will be the action that you have. Right, you add on the weight uh, of that particular uh, edge, and then uh, you sum it to your best that you can get in t steps. And that gets you the q function. And then vt plus 1, the best that you can get in t plus 1 step, it's just the max over all the nodes that you, that you can get to from the current, current node or the current state. Uh, okay, so uh, for Markov decision process, uh, this is a sort of stochastic transition rather than you get to the node that uh, you asked to get to. Okay, so, uh, so in the value iteration network, what they did is they construct a neural network to do that, right? So you represent your V uh, essentially as uh, an image right, on the states, and then you construct the Q function by taking the reward map, uh, and then summing over the previous value, and that gets you for the different Q, uh, different actions that you can take, uh, a particular reward map, and then you do a max. So you, you see that all the operations that you do are the summations, the max operations, these are the usual operations that you have in a neural network. So uh, in the experiments, uh, in the paper, uh, they did imitation learning. So, uh, so the idea is that you're given an image, you're given many images and targets as your training set, and then you're told right, at, uh, for this particular image, this particular target, this particular goal, uh, what's the right action? If you are for every state, what's the right action to take? Right? Or at, in, in a training set, a particular state, what's the right action to take? Uh, so you train uh, with lots of uh, such examples, and then, uh, then you're given a new image, a new goal, and then you're asked to, uh, to get to the goal. Right? So that's uh, the problem. And in the experiments, uh, you can see that compared to using a normal convolutional neural networks, uh, it does better, right? particularly when the map gets bigger, 
uh, the value iteration network gets 97%, whereas the normal convolutional neural network gets about 74%. So uh, it seems that for this particular problem, the algorithmic prior is helping. Uh, we have been working with a partially observable Markov decision process. Uh, if you are not familiar, what that means is uh, you don't actually know the state that you are in. right? Uh, so in, in this case of the example with the map, you don't know uh, where your robot doesn't know uh, where it is in the map. So it only has a probability distribution. right? So it has a distribution of uh, what we call its belief, uh, the distribution of different places that it might be in. Uh, so that's uh, why it's partially observable. And uh, what you get to help you to localize in this case is just you get local observations. Right? You get some observations that you can use to update your belief or the probability distribution of where you will be right, at the next time step, uh, at each time step. So uh, the observations may be local, right? Like in this case, uh, they are exactly the same in these two positions. So you can't uh, localize yourself exactly, but no, it helps, right? You can, uh, you can update your belief and finally localize yourself, uh, presumably. So uh, what's interesting about POMDP is that, okay, for finite horizon problems, the value iteration algorithm is uh, an exact algorithm, right? So you get an exact answer, whereas POMDP is P-space hard. So the, the way I view that is that right, any algorithm that you come up for this uh, is going to be flawed. Right, it's going to fail somewhere. It's going to be an approximate algorithm. So uh, that, that's, uh, in my view, would make learning interesting. So what we did was we tried the simplest approximation algorithm for QMD, uh, for POMDP. That's the QMDP algorithm. I'll describe what that is. Uh, add, add a filter to update. Uh, your probability distribution, well, I'll refer to that as belief, which is our standard term. Right. So uh, given the current belief, you multiply it by the transition matrix, and then you marginalize, that gets you uh, sort of the current belief after the transition, and then you multiply it by an observation <coughs> function, like what you see, and that gets you uh, your, your new belief. Okay. So, so that, that's the filter, and in this case, this is exact. Right. So this is exact. Uh, but what we can't do exactly is actually the, the planning step. So what we do is, uh, well in the QMDP algorithm, what we do is we take the Q function from our previous value iteration network. Right? So this Q function assumes that we know, uh, we know the state exactly at all times. Okay? It assumes the state is observable. And uh, the QMDP algorithm just uh, averages the Q value uh, over the using the current belief. Okay, and then uh, you take the max of the Q value to take your action. So that's the QMDP algorithm. So the uh, I guess an important assumption is that right, it's taking the Q function of the fully observed problem. Okay, so that, that's going to be problematic for us uh, in the I guess the next the next slide. Uh, okay, so uh, we tried this and uh, we thought you know, on different problems. Uh, the maze turned out to be quite interesting. Right? So the, the maze is more or less exactly what you think it is. Right? You're lost in a maze, you're put in a maze, and then you're asked to get out or get to a particular location in a maze, so you don't know where you are. And uh, again, we have uh, like multiple training sets. Uh, okay. uh, you have multiple, multiple training sets. Uh, with maps and goals, maps and goals, and uh, so on, and uh, given uh, the test set. Uh, okay, so for for the maze, uh, similarly to the uh, value iteration network just now, uh, it seems compared to a sort of conventional recurrent neural network structure, uh, doing LSTM plus CNN, right? CNN work with images, and then LSTM to give it memory. Uh, it does better. Right, so no, 90, nine, high 90s versus quite bad performance. So it seems that uh, in this case, the algorithmic prior, as I call it, uh, helps. Uh, we also just took out the filter part, uh, the Bayesian filter, uh, so, and then replaced that uh, with an LSTM, and then uh, again, it didn't do that well, so it seems uh, 
the basin filter help, at least in our experiments. Uh, but uh, one interesting thing is that the QMDP net outperformed the QMDP exact algorithm. So the QMDP exact algorithm is the algorithm where you give the true model to the algorithm, right? But then you run the, the QMDP algorithm. So the QMDP algorithm is an approximate algorithm. Uh, so it turns out for this main problem, it failed often. But it, uh, it didn't get to the goal often. So the issue is the assumption we made that The assumption we make that uh, the Q, Q function that we use is for the fully observable problem. So what happens when you uh, don't know where you are, when you're partially observable, right? Let's say when yeah, you don't know whether you're somewhere here or where you're here, and then the goal is here, right? If you're up here, maybe the right thing to do is to turn right. And if you're down here, maybe the right thing to do is to turn left. But by if you average it out, uh, it turns out that the you know, better thing to do according to the QMDP algorithm is just to stay there. It's just not to move. Uh, but that's wrong in the case of the POMDP, right? Because right, wherever, whenever you move, you get new information, and then you update your belief. You get you get a new observation, observe a new new uh, location. So uh, so QMDP often fails, and when we do learning right by constructing a neural network. It's a recurrent neural network, so you roll it out through time, and then you uh, do back propagation. Uh, and okay, I didn't say earlier the sort of things that we learn would be so are uh, the uh, reward function and the transition functions. So there's enough freedom in learning uh, the reward function and transition function that it can actually fix fix the problem. Okay, so uh, it seems that in this case, learning helps. Yes. Could you yes. exactly point out what is the approximation? Ah, okay. So the, uh, so the problem speed space hard, so right, any algorithm will be approximate. The QMDP is simple. So it does a filter, which is exact. And then uh, this is the approximation step. Uh, so the Q function, which is, uh, I guess, right, the shortest path value for a particular action, uh, assumes that you know where you are exactly. Assumes you observe the state. Yes, right. Yeah, well, you can't do that, uh, or at least you'll fail sometimes, and it fails in this case, right? And I, I guess you can see a maze is somewhere that it might fail because you have a lot of symmetries, right? You have a lot of places where turning right and turning left, uh, sometimes in different locations, different things are better, and you average it out, uh, fail sometimes. Uh, so you're using the, an RNA for the value iteration part, but you're using classical base for the uh, if you did, okay, so if we did uh, LS CNN for the input, the images, right, and then put it through a LSDM for the memory, uh, it fails. It fails in our, exp right? We, we tried multiple times and it, it didn't work for, for this particular one. Uh, okay, so. Uh, okay. So uh, it seems that uh, it actually did learn some of the structure as well. So when we tried to generalize it, right, you, you learn it on sort of random, net, random maps that look like this, and then you try to test it on a real uh, map acquired by laser. Uh, so it did, it did quite well. Right? So it has actually learned at least an approximate transition, approximate reward that's reasonable. So it is able to like, scale up when you set it to a somewhat different problem, a large, in this case, a much larger map. And uh, so it got you know, in the 90s. Uh, and in fact, it outperformed the exact algorithm in this case as well. OK, so, uh, okay, so far I've talked about, uh, I guess, essentially dynamic programming. Uh, but uh, dynamic programming has problems in that it doesn't scale, right? So now, now I'm interested in scaling it up. Uh, it doesn't scale, you know, a few hundred states, well, thousands of states are probably fine. Actually, even 10,000 states are probably fine. But uh, right, the sort of problems that uh, I'm interested in looking at is like the uh, StarCraft II challenge from DeepMind, 
right, where you have, I guess the, the entire game might have hundreds of agents and you know, thousands of time steps. So your number of states is going to blow up exponentially in the number of variables, number of agents, and your actions in this case as well sort of blows up very quickly. So, uh, right, so in the sort of games might be, right, you know, you collect minerals, uh, you have multiple agents, they collect minerals, then they build, you know, build resources, build barracks, and build more army, and then uh, finally you're going to attack your enemy, right? That's the StarCraft game. Uh, but so we are, we are interested in asking, right, you know, can we try to scale this to handle much larger problems? Uh, this is ongoing work, so I, I'll describe the idea. We don't have very concrete results yet. Uh, okay, so uh, the way we are trying to do this is uh, we are going to encode the problem as a graphical model. You, you could encode it as, say, an integer program as well, right? There are different ways to encode the problem. Uh, right? But the, the idea is to try to uh, apply an algorithm, an approximate algorithm that we know of to uh, this problem and encode that as a neural network and then try to train it, right? So uh, we'll see, see, we want to see how well the idea works. So uh, what we're trying is we build a factor graph. Uh, so uh, hopefully you're familiar, but uh, so uh, in this case, I'm approximating it as a deterministic planning problem. So I have constraints, right, that the uh, transition must agree, right? The next state must agree with the action that you take. Uh, so these are constraints, and I, got, I have constraints for the reward function. Uh, it's exponential because uh, in graphical models, you multiply everything together, right? So this, uh, this sort of represents it as a deterministic uh, planning problem. Uh, then we have you know, multiple approximate inference algorithms. Uh, I'll describe one of them, say, uh, loopy belief propagation. And uh, you know, it turns out you can just encode it as a recurrent neural network architecture. Right, and then uh, the idea is then to use backpropagation to learn. Uh, why might that be helpful? I guess my, uh, I'm thinking, right, that these are all approximate algorithms. So it should help things like convergence issues, right? And if it uh, doesn't do well enough, I'm free, since I have a neural network, I'm free to add more capacity to the network to help the algorithm. So hopefully it might help with convergence issues. And uh, we are do training uh, discriminatively, right? So hopefully it helps in issues like the QMDP uh, net issues where our approximate algorithm gets it wrong in certain places. Okay, so uh, w just to show you what the equations look like for lo loopy belief propagation so that you can see it's just, uh, no, it's just a neural network, right? So we have uh, summation operations and then we have max operations. So you have sum gates and you have uh, max gates. And then you have this defines, uh, if you apply this over all the factors, this defines uh, a layer, right? And then uh, it's a recurrent neural network. Uh, okay, but uh, you, know, you don't have to do this, right? You can, you know, if you prefer integer uh, programming or, right, or if you prefer to take this and then do a linear programming relaxation, there are multiple algorithms that do that. Uh, but you know, that, that's a question of, Right, what sort of algorithms are good for this sort of approaches? Uh, so, so I want to uh, talk a little bit about the questions that uh, has come up, I guess, out of looking at this, which I don't have answers to, but I thought it's interesting. Uh, okay, so one question is, uh, does that matter, right? So one of the reasons for the resurgence of interest in uh, Deep neural network, it's called deep, right? It's because uh, people have found that as you add depth, it seems to help. So in this sort of problems, does uh, depth matter, right? So uh, for the single Markov decision process, if I only solve one problem, uh, it, it will actually have a small representation with a shallow network, right? It's easy to see all you do is, since you're solving one problem, you solve it, and then uh, if you even look at the value iteration network, just keep the last layer, and that gives you a shallow network, which is small. Right, so solve one problem, uh, small, small network. Uh, but what uh, the value iteration does, network does, is it takes, right, it doesn't solve one problem, it takes the problem specification, in this case it takes a map, right, which is the problem specification, as input, and then uh, the network encodes an algorithm. 
right, to solve uh, to solve the problem as specified by the by the image. So value iteration is a network. It's a deep network. So an interesting question I think to ask is right: Is there a small, like shallow network? If we fix the depth of the network, do we still have a shallow, uh, a small representation, as in a polynomial size representation in say the number of states? Right. So is there a sort of shallow representation that is compact? So that would uh, justify right, using deep networks and. Uh, like you'll give us some guidance, right? That maybe for this type of problems, uh, we should use a deep network. Like shallow network will fail. Uh, so I think that's an interesting question. Uh, so for the special case, so the uh, Markov decision process is slightly different from shortest path. Uh, for a special case of Bellman Ford, uh, right, we, we know if we do e, e iteration, uh, V iterations, number of nodes, then, then we are done. And uh, we also know that there are parallel shortest path algorithms with logarithmic depth. So logarithmic depth is probably not so bad, right? Or polylog polylogarithmic depth. It's probably not so bad. Doesn't uh, grow that deep. Okay, it's not clear depth is bad, but uh, I guess people have found that you have issues with learning when you have very deep networks. The gradients explode or they decay to uh, very small. So you know, possibly this would be an interesting experimental question, right? Like, you know, sh if you try uh, different depth networks. And there, there are parallel algorithms for uh, shortest path that you can convert into a network. Then it might be interesting to see empirically if that helps. Right? That shortening the depth helps. And uh, yeah, OK, so that's uh, one, I think, interesting question. Uh, OK, so the reason we are doing this is right, asking, right, no, is does algorithmic prior help, right? Is, is it theoretically or empirically true that it helps? Uh, so if it's difficult to learn without sort of encoding the algorithm, then, then it's a good thing to do this, right? So uh, the experiments that we have done seem to suggest that it helps. Uh, and the value iteration network, the experiments that they did there seem to indicate that it's helped. It helps, uh, but uh, I guess it'll be interesting maybe to study theoretically, right? Like our algorithms hard to learn uh, when we encode it as a generic network, like you know, generic CNN. Uh, is it difficult to learn? Uh, right. So some uh, our experiments seem to indicate it helps, uh, but you know AlphaGo, which is very successful, did fine, right? Fantastic, uh, and it's just a generic convolutional neural network. Uh, it, it is doing a planning problem, right? Uh, or uh, the later one is the residual network. So you know maybe we just need enough depth. Give the network enough depth, it will fix all problems, or maybe not. So I think that's uh, interesting, right? I, if uh, they are difficult to learn, then coming up with blocks of algorithms, uh, no, maybe that is a good good thing to do, right? But no, may, maybe. Uh, Maybe you just need to have enough depth in your uh, sort of normal structure. Uh, okay, th right. Then there's a question of you know, what types of problems uh, would this likely help? Right? What are the problems that may benefit from our knowledge of algorithms that we would then encode it in as a network? Uh, I guess you know, since I'm doing this, I'm suggesting that planning and optimization problems like you know the StarCraft 2, this might be a good place to look because they, they have the sort of structure, right? That where sort of an, an algorithm, at least we know algorithms for planning problems. And approximate, where when you need to scale, scale up, uh, they're all approximate. Right? So that, that's an opportunity for learning to help because all the algorithms are approximate. You can Right, learn to fix some of the issues. You can add more approximation capabilities to your uh, neural networks, and uh, hopefully that would be helpful. Okay, so that's that's all I have. So we have time for a few questions. Any questions? Yes. So you 
in the for instance, in the value isolation network, so you have this dummy equation uh, in some sense it has to satisfy some fixed point uh, relationship. Yes. Somehow it's not encoded in the yes. algorithm. Uh, yes, we are not. Uh, so all, all the things we do are finite, uh, I guess, finite time ho finite horizon. So yeah, the fixed point, it, it is a different kind of knowledge, right? The fixed point is for discounted uh, problems, and I don't, I don't know how to encode that. <laughs> because what, what we do is we, we roll out the network, fix the depth, and then run back propagation. Yeah, so I, I don't know how to encode fixed point. Yes, belief propagation may not converge. <laughs> what I'm hoping is that uh, the training will help it. Right? Training will help tune it. And if it doesn't converge still, right, we add more capacity to the network and hopefully you'll still make good decisions. That, that's the advantage of having a neural network. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Yes, please. Uh, no, it's the same, right? They they encode the structure, and then at the end, uh, at the end of it, they need to say, "I'm at this state." They, they call that the attention, right? I'm at this stage. This is the state I'm currently at. The robot is currently at. Therefore, I should look at this corresponding state in the uh, at the end of the value iteration yeah, network. Uh, yes, it's used as a function approximator, but that's exactly what I'm suggesting here, right? I'm suggesting that we use the algorithm to help us structure the architecture. The algorithm converts to an architecture, uh, and then you train it as if it's a right, policy or value function. Uh, okay, directly applying it. So in, in model, so in, in the case where we are doing this, we are not assuming that we will learn the true model, right? We are just using it sort of as a. I use the term prior, right? As a sort of prior for the structure of the network. Uh, so we may not actually learn the true model. In fact, we have to learn the uh, incorrect model, right? To to achieve. To, to achieve this result, to outperform the true model, we have to learn an incorrect model. But the incorrect model still, in this case, it, it seemed to have captured you know, a fair bit of the, the structure of the transition and some reasonable reward. It still does well when you move it to a large, larger map. Yeah. Right, let's move on to the next talk. So thank you, Vincent.